Whoa, 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 did you see it? Hold on, replay, 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 and stop right there. Watch. <laughs> I have watched the opening episode of Yellowstone season one three times now, and I just figured something out. But I'm not going to spoil future episodes until much later. Longtime fans, we can talk at the end of this video. New peeps, I'll treat this just like an ordinary Yellowstone episode recap video, which will officially begin in three. I know you deserve better. <laughs> Best second one for you is peace. That was John Dutton, right before he puts down a horse mortally wounded in a tractor-trailer accident near his ranch in Montana. Talk about a captivating opening scene to a television series. But if there's anything you need to know about Yellowstone, it's that it's not the show that pussyfoots around. Things we lose to keep you fed. I'm really not exaggerating when I say that that early scene is a through line for seasons one, two, three, four, five, it's Billy Dukes, and along with Addison Hager, I host the Yellowstone Recap Podcast called Dutton Rules. Links in the description section below. I also help answer burning questions after each new episode of Yellowstone. So now that they're being aired on a new network, I thought it'd be really helpful to welcome new fans and answer critical questions from this episode. There's big picture stuff like who are all these people and who's related to who, and there's meta details. Like why did John Dutton blow up the river? And who is that guy that Casey Dutton killed? And then there's Beth Dutton. Yeah, Beth. She's the reason it was so surprising to hear that the show's coming to network television. Here's a clip from an unedited episode that had to be readdressed for CBS. You look like a real soft flap Ted. Oh, you city boys too. Quick disclaimer, I've recapped the unedited version of episode one so I can deliver it on time to you. That means I may hit on things that didn't make CBS. Episode one was like 92 minutes unedited, and an hour of network TV gives you 42 minutes, so yeah, there are cuts, but I think filling you in on what you missed if you only watched CBS will be helpful as you try to understand what's to come. Tap subscribe if you appreciate this, and a reminder, this is a conversation. I'll be here weekly, so feel free to let me know if you think I got something wrong in the comments section below or by emailing staff at tasteofcountry.com. I'm certainly not above admitting it. It kind of happens a lot on this podcast. First up, the Yellowstone principles, starting with the Dutton family. John Dutton, played by Kevin Costner, is the family patriarch. And for time's sake, I'm just going to include the actor name on screen instead of saying each one out loud every time. His wife is, well, we don't really know anything about her yet, but trust me, we will. Together, they raised four kids. The oldest is Lee Dutton, who throughout episode one is being groomed to take over the ranch. Lee is also a livestock agent with the Montana Livestock Association, an organization charged with taking care of crimes related to farms and animals. That's real important to understand. His first youngest brother is Jamie Dutton, who wears a suit all the time because he's not only the family lawyer, he works for the state of Montana district attorney's office. Beth Dutton is next, and her job is best defined with a clip. You will have the unique distinction of being the only drilling company to go bankrupt in the largest oil boom of the last century. Let's just say she gets stuff done. She was once dating someone called Daniel, but when she's back home, she has a thing with Rip that is, as of now, a little bit one-sided. They have sex, she insults his manhood, he invites her to a music festival, she laughs at him. Rip's a really important character and sort of an enigma it's telling that when we first meet him, he's putting the Yellowstone brand on Jimmy, a druggie that John is convinced to bring onto the ranch. Or you prove that you deserve another chance. From what I can see, you don't. Jefferson White plays Jimmy, the source of some comedic relief for now, but later an integral part of the plot. And I'll mention now that he told us all about that branding scene in a previous episode of the Dutton Rules podcast. You can find links below. He said they actually used a red hot brand and a piece of leather stretched over wood when they pressed the brand against the leather, he could smell it and definitely feel the heat. The final brother is Casey Dutton, for who reasons that aren't quite clear is the black sheep of the family. He lives in the Broken Rock Reservation with his native wife, Monica Long, and their son, Tate. Professionally, she's a school teacher and he breaks horses, but the events of episode one threaten all of that. Most of her family doesn't really like him all that much. 
but her grandfather does, so it's out of love that he says this as the episode reaches a climax. I don't ask much, but I'm asking you this. Go home. Take care of my granddaughter. Be good to that boy. If I'm being honest, that quote summarizes Casey's journey through like four or five seasons of this show. Other people you need to know about are Chief Thomas Rainwater, played by Gil Birmingham. He's brand new to the reservation, and he has ambitious goals that he plans to aggressively achieve. Yeah, he and John don't get along all that well. If you act like a thief, Thomas, I will treat you like one. The relationship between the natives and the white man is probably the most important theme of Yellowstone, and so much of what Taylor Sheridan has produced. 1883, 1923, and a movie called Wind River all explore that, while subsequent seasons of Yellowstone will wander, it's still vital to watch closely how John treats his literal neighbors. It's also worth watching how he treats this guy. Dan Jenkins is the antagonist throughout season one of Yellowstone, but trust me when I say that not all villains are bad guys on this show, it's part of why it's so compelling. In fact, let's start right there. Like I said, I watched this episode three times and have now come to the conclusion that what John did to Dan Jenkins and his Paradise Valley is not really made all that clear in this opening episode. Key plot elements get buried at times on Yellowstone, even if they're sort of epic. Paradise Valley is an upscale residential development that Dan Jenkins is building right next door to the Yellowstone Ranch. I mean, the Duttons can literally see him golfing on the other side of the fence. You might remember in the opening sequence, John pulls a business card for Paradise Valley out of the dead truck driver's pocket after he puts his horse down. That was ominous. Later we meet Dan as he's meeting in a space just above a bar that Beth frequents. Quick non sequitur, that was a pretty poor use of Chris Stapleton's Tennessee whiskey to transition to this scene, but for the most part the music of Yellowstone is very solid. I dropped all of the important song titles and artists in the description section below, and I'll try to point out each one somewhere along the way in this video. Dan says he's going to dam the river to provide hydraulic power to his development, knowing full well that will either flood or dry up John Dutton's property. It's not made clear to me which one, but both are really bad news. The two meet on a golf course and it doesn't go well. So John takes action by getting his boys in the bunkhouse to line the valley with dynamite, and quite literally changes the direction of the river so it diverts around Paradise Valley. Epic. The next morning, Dan realizes what has happened. He's not pleased. But moving a river is actually the second most important thing that John did that day because he planned a cattle rescue mission for the same night, and that went really poorly. But before we get there, the setup. John's cattle wandered through a broken fence onto reservation land, and because of a boundary, he can't get them back. The drama of this is best explored through Casey, who's on both sides of the issue. He knows the fight is coming. His wife's grandfather, Felix, tells him to get lost, but he doesn't listen. As night falls, Lee and the cowboys and the livestock agents attack, and shots are fired by this guy. This is Monica's brother, Robert Long. You may recognize the actor as the same guy who played Victor on Breaking Bad in Better Call Saul. On Yellowstone, he's a decorated army veteran. He kind of also hates Casey, his brother-in-law. John Dutton's mission works, but Robert comes up on Lee and shoots him in the back. Casey, who had been cowboying around the entire time, finds his brother and tends to him, but Robert pulls a gun. Casey turns and shoots him once, twice, five times. In case you don't already know, there's no such thing as heaven. Lee Dutton dies, and Casey brings the body back to the Dutton Ranch on horseback, setting up a pretty emotional final 15 minutes, and that's about it. Revenge is on John's mind as he tells Beth and Jamie this. I'm not going anywhere. Just tell me how to fight. Everyone. At the start of this video, I mentioned a pretty huge Easter egg, and I'll reveal that with a warning that if you've not watched Yellowstone prequel 1883 and you plan to, you need to jump right now. Let me go through the important song titles as you decide whether or not to stick around for this next spoiler or not. The first song we hear comes as Casey is bringing his horse back to the Broken Rock Reservation. It's called Save Your Soul by artist Joey Styles. Not long after this is Tennessee Whiskey, and then this moment,
That's Judith by heavy metal band A Perfect Circle. Later, as Casey and his son Tate are getting ice cream, we'll hear the first of several Whiskey Myers songs to be used. This one's called On the River. When the dynamite blows, it's Tumbleweed by Pucifer, and as the credits roll, it's a great version of Trouble About My Soul by the Trishas. Here's how John said goodbye to Lee. Which is? Which is? We'll just rest here a bit. Now, here is how Tim McGraw's character James Dutton says goodbye to his oldest child Elsa, who was also shot in the back by Native Americans during something of a shootout in 1883. I mean, that's just beautiful script writing by Taylor Sheridan, and I think it may foreshadow how season five will end. For now, it doesn't really mean all that much, but I'll make sure to point out these more coincidences than not as they come along, then we'll dive even deeper during upcoming episodes of the Dutton Rules Podcast, which you'll be able to find on YouTube one day after every new Yellowstone Universe episode. I'm Billy Dukes for Taste of Country. Thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing.